A huge new exhibit was about to open at the St. Pete Museum of History, celebrating the history of baseball. But as 10 News investigator Noah Pransky tells us, some of the exhibit's most impressive items may be forgeries. I have Jackie Robinson. I have the great Satchel Page. Now there's Fidel Castro. Marilyn Monroe, Joe DiMaggio. It's a collection. I got this Elvis Presley ball. That might even make the Hall of Fame jealous. I think I've got more balls than them. I'm now at 4,630. So uh, it's, a, it's the big one, Guinness Book of Records, the biggest collection in the world. The only downside to it, you admit yourself, there's probably some that aren't real here. There, uh, there probably is. It's a rather matter-of-fact admission, considering these autographs are the centerpiece of a new quarter-million-dollar exhibit at the St. Pete Museum of History. The man loaning the baseballs, Oldsmar's Dennis Schrader, has dedicated his entire life to collecting them. I got my first ball from Mickey Mantle in 1956. I was nine years old at Al Lang Stadium in St. Petersburg. His collection is truly magnificent, from Hall of Famers to a league of their own. But about 20 years ago, Schrader started buying balls online and through auctions. The problem with that, you never really know who's signing them. In fact, in the 1990s, the FBI found that a massive autograph forgery ring had infiltrated nearly every large collection in the world. How do I know that signature is real? And my answer to that question is, how do you know it isn't real? How do you prove that? Now, the only person I know that can prove that a signature is true or false would be... Uh, FBI forensic examiner. Okay, so we got a forensic expert who's done work for the feds. Autograph analyst John Reznikoff, one of the best in the world. Schrader didn't want authenticators anywhere near his collection, but we sent photos of 16 of the items to Reznikoff. The great number of them that I looked at were indeed, in my opinion, forgeries. Reznikoff says the only foolproof way to know if an autograph is real is to see it signed in person, but he was confident at least 12 of the 16 autographs we showed him were fake. Charles Lindbergh and Amelia Earhart on the same baseball. I've never seen either of those people sign a baseball, much less together in the same ink. They were only together one time. But we didn't stop there. We took the same photos to three other experts, including two top dealers and the publisher of Autograph Magazine. They all agreed that only a few of the items looked authentic. Then we took the Elvis Presley and Marilyn Monroe autographs to two of the nation's leading experts in celebrity autographs. They also thought the signatures looked forged. The St. Pete Museum of History exhibit is now open to the public. Executive Director Rui Farias just joined the museum, but says the Board of Directors has no concerns about the collection's authenticity. But that's not really what the exhibit is only about. Um, we've used baseball and the baseballs to teach American and St. Pete history. It's a grand exhibit for sure, but like so many other great feats in baseball, it may be joined in the history books with an asterisk. We asked Dennis Trader to comment on our experts' opinions, but he declined. The museum, though, is holding a black tie reception this week to honor him Thursday night. If you've got a piece of memorabilia you may have questions about, we've also put some links to help you out on our website at WTSP.com. Reggie Heather, back to you.